nothing feels quite like living in the future the way wireless charging does. Simply put, wireless charging lets you charge up your gadgets without having to plug in a cable for power. It's pretty neat, but how does it actually work and why even bother? Are there any downsides to wireless charging? In very basic terms, wireless chargers use a property of magnetism and electricity known as induction charging, which is basically electric current converted into a magnetic field. This field that induces an electric current in the device that you want to charge. That's a bit of an oversimplification, but it's essentially what happens in the wireless charging process. There are two coils, one in each device, that convert the energy from one form to another. This is the kind of wireless charging you're likely to find in personal gadgets like smartphones and smartwatches. Induction charging only works over very short distances, just 10 millimeters or less. So although the power is wireless, you usually need to set the device down on some sort of charging pad for the power to flow. These induction chargers use low frequency signals to move power from a charger to the device. Wouldn't it be cool just to walk into a room and have all of your devices automatically receive power? That's resonant charging, using high frequency radio waves to send power to devices wirelessly over longer distances. One of the best parts of resonant charging is that the relatively high frequency waves can travel much farther than induction chargers. We're talking multiple feet. So as long as you stay within range of the coil, your device will permanently keep charging. It's a futuristic idea, but electrical pioneer Nikola Tesla was doing it more than a century ago. Had history gone in a different direction, wireless electricity might have been the standard way of doing things today. When it comes to wireless charging, there are different approaches, each with their own pros and cons. Different companies have different ideas about how people want to use wireless power in their daily lives, which subsequently has given rise to multiple standards for wireless charging and, you guessed it, these standards aren't interoperable. Qi wireless chargers, or some people call them QI wireless chargers, use the short range induction method we discussed first, and that's what you'll find in most personal devices that charge wirelessly. The A fuel standard uses the long range resonant method, and you're not likely to find that built into your gadgets just yet, but you can buy special charging cases for smartphones that add A fuel capability. One thing you may notice about wireless charging, regardless of the standard, is that they don't offer that much power. And it's a real shame because fast charging has become pretty much the standard we're used to when it comes to cable charging. Modern USB-C smartphones and laptops can often accept anything between 40 and 60 watts. Using USB-C power delivery, you can actually move 100 watts of power over a USB-C cable, but no current lithium ion batteries on the phone can accept quite that much yet. Qi and air fuel chargers don't offer nearly as much power, but both standards are still evolving. Right now, 40 watt wireless fast charging has started to enter the market, and A Fuel hopes to reach 100 watts at some point in the future. We can also expect battery technology to improve, making it easier to charge devices more quickly as time goes by. For more insight into what the future of wireless charging might look like, check out the article linked below. See you next time.